Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I record tutorials and how I manage to I have uh, the things that I do. So, um, recording video is pretty straightforward. There's lots of programs that are very well known about how to do that. Back in the day, I used to use Fraps. It's a pretty common one, pretty good for uh, video game recording, that kind of thing. That's what it's used for, for screen capture, that sort of deal. Uh, these days, I use a program called XSplit. Uh, it's not free. Uh, there is another program called OBS, which stands for Open Broadcasting Software, and it is pretty similar to XSplit. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of this, a lot of the features have pretty direct parity, um, so you could use that if you really need to. But the video, the video recording aspect of, of what I do isn't really the hard part. The hard part is the audio recording aspect. Because if we're doing a video game, that's totally fine because it uses, uh, you know, the, the regular direct Windows or, or Mac audio, inter like, you know, devices and XSplit and Fraps or whatever can capture that. But we're in, if we're using FL and that kind of thing, it uses ASIO audio and that no, none of the video recording software has any idea how to what to do with that. So we have to sort of do it ourselves. Um, so the way this works is that uh, I have I'm using I have Windows's like my my computer's primary uh, audio processing still running. Um, it's set to run at um, my audio interface, which is a PreSonus Fire Studio project. Um, I have a picture of it. This is going to be important because um, actually I have I have two of these. The reason I have two of these is because I run a recording studio out of my basement and I want to record drums. And you can daisy chain these. You can see there's two FireWire inputs. Um, but the, the reason why this is important is because what happens is that Windows uh, has – actually, I can just show you the menu. Do, do, do. Way back to devices. So here it is, speakers, PreSonus Fire Studio Audio. And here's the other one. Oh wait, no, that's only just one. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it shows two if it's it being if it's being particularly weird. Um, Windows shows like this. If you go to recording, you can also see that it accepts the microphone input. And there's a lot of things you can do to kind of mess with how this works. Like uh, if we go to advanced, we could say two channel, 24 bit audio, all the way up to however many inputs you have. There are eight in this particular one. It doesn't actually see the other one, the daisy chained one. Um, and you can tell what you know bit depth and uh, audio. Well, the rate the is set by the actual interface itself. Right now, it's set to forty four one. And that's fine. Uh, you can set levels and all that. I kind of just keep it at max and leave it alone, and that's all well and good. And as you see, it's it's accepting audio. It can hear me talk. And the reason it can hear me talk is because what I'm doing is that in the outputs over here, you can see there's these main outs. Right, these main outs are going to my amp, which is going to my speakers. My speakers are passive, so I need amplification. That's where these are going, and then I have these uh, four extra outs, well, eight extra outs. It's actually a, gr a group of, of eight outs, and uh, output um, one and two here, or three and four, one of these, whatever. I have extra outputs, and I'm routing. I'm essentially cloning them uh, in the driver software for uh, the Fire Studio project. I'm telling it to what, whatever is coming out of the main out is also coming out of these extra outs. And these extra outs, I just have quarter inch cables and I plug them in from the back and into the front. These two main inputs here, these mic instrument inputs. You can see they actually separate them. They're, they're grouped uh, mic instrument, mic line. These two first two inputs are actually uh, a lot better than the preceding eight. And so that's why I use those front, those front two. Uh, my actual audio, my voice, is plugged into the other uh, PreSonus's um, one and uh, well one on the bottom because I, I want the extra quality for my my uh, voice processing. And now Windows is accepting these first two inputs by, by based on what we said here as the microphone input. And now it's no longer ASIO audio; it's just Windows actual audio. And so this means that Skype. Uh, XSplit, anything that accepts the microphone input as a, from a, from a list from your Windows drivers, which the pre notice has some, uh, can accept it as the mic input. So it's not the, the the way that we're doing this. The way that we have this working is that we're not actually using system audio anymore, or like play what you hear that kind of thing. Those settings that 
various capture software use to, to incorporate audio. I'm just using the microphone input. And instead of just being the mic, it's everything. Now, the way that we're actually still hearing me, because we're saying that, okay, cool, uh, that's that's how it's routed, whatever. I'm actually processing my voice in an entirely separate uh, FL instance. You see here, it says tutorial recording three. Um, I have this running in the background of every video that I do. Every every time you hear me talk, this is happening in the background, along with whatever else I'm doing, whatever track I'm working on, whatever stream I'm doing. This is what's up. I have an EQ, and then it's going into a, a limiter, not because I'm actually limiting anything, but because I am using it to, A, delay the audio a little bit so that um, it kind of syncs up with the video. It doesn't quite do it because I haven't actually measured directly what the delay is supposed to be. And then also a noise uh, gate. A very, a very not harsh noise gate. Uh, this is just because if it gets any harsher, it gets kind of weird sounding. But that's just so that when I'm not talking, you don't hear like background noise. It's particularly effective. And then I'm compressing it so that it's even and loud and leveled and all, all that good stuff. It's actually kind of low right now. I'm not totally sure why. So I'm going to turn it up. Yeah. Look at that. Look at it go. I don't think I'm doing anything in the, in the bands out here. Nope. That's just uh, the master just to pump it up so that it, um, you can hear what I'm saying evenly. So, uh, you know, there's the whole idea of compressing dynamic ranges. That I can talk pretty quietly like this and it sounds pretty okay. But I can also talk like this and it doesn't sound like it's a billion times louder. It's quite nice. Um, so yeah, uh, XSplit, like right now, I'm recording the video, XSplit is recording the video input and the mic input, and it's running it all together, so I don't have to actually sync it up later, because that's what I used to do in the older videos when I'm using Fraps. Um, I recorded the video with Fraps, just by itself, and then I would record the audio in an Edison instance. I would have, um, I would have an Edison open inside the project, which is why oftentimes you would see me, like, my voice processing would actually be in whatever project I'm doing, in whatever how to base video or in whatever song I'm working on. And I'd have an Edison on the master, I'd hit record, I'd say something, and then I'd sync it up in editing later. That's how those videos were done. That's why um, all those videos started with Edison on the screen and me hitting record. Um, I thought that was actually kind of cool. I could have I edited that out, but I thought it was fairly interesting to kind of see how that worked out. Um, these days, I avoid editing at all costs. Uh, the way that this works is that I hit the go button and everything is already nice and linked and good. Like the camera's on, the, the screen is on, my voice is on, and all the audio is going in there. And I don't have to worry about um, editing or linking or anything. So I, I try to avoid having to edit stuff because the faster the pipeline is for creating these videos, the more videos I can create without being burned out. So that's actually pretty important. Um, now, in terms of in terms of getting this to work, I actually did uh, a student <laughs> got a lesson with me, and like his primary uh, question was actually how to do this. And um, really, all that you need is if to do precisely what I'm doing with the actual physical routing, just an audio interface with a pair of extra outs, and in the driver software for said interface, there's probably uh, a method like an input or something way to clone your outputs. In the PreSonus drivers, I can actually open it up and show you. It didn't load. Ha, <laughs> that's weird. It didn't have the thing saved. Uh, you saw what we saw. We load right there was actually the profile that had this correctly working because that happens a lot. Screwing with these drivers. So um, by by default, all these outputs are just off. They're they're being controlled by the DAW. And actually, that used to be something I did as well. Is that I would I would go into the DAW and you can actually come in here and in the outputs and tell it what output you wanted to go out of, and I would tell it to output. Uh, output three and four, which are the two outputs that I'm using to uh, clone back into back into the the input, and that's how I would I would get to record audio coming out of the project. But I need to do that. So in in the actual interface drivers, I turned on three or four to be on mixer. So now it's just on. And what's going on here? You could tell it. You can tell it to. Uh, you have to tell it to turn on the dial one and two, and then you have to pan it because it's not panned by default. And you also have to mute uh, input one and two because if I don't have the muted, you get this kind of robot sound going on right now that I actually can't hear. 
I can't. I couldn't hear that when it was doing that. And as a result, I'm not actually totally sure it was doing it, but I'm pretty sure it was. And uh, that's because it's um, doubling up the input audio twice, once doubling up once, and it's a little it's a little weird. Um, it's going to be different for every kind of every driver software. Like the guy that I was doing it with had an M audio thing, but um, yeah, this is uh, what it looks like when it works on uh, the PreSonus project drivers. Indeed. So the benefit of doing this with XSplit is that um, another cool bit is that XSplit has scene options. Actually, I could probably show you. You go get Infinity XSplit. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. So over here we have the you see these scene these scene numbers and whatever. Some of these scenes uh, have like the intros to things like this. This is the intro. If you're wondering why I have stopped using this, is because it doesn't have the R in it. I kind of need the R to be in it. So I'm working on that, and there's a bunch of different bunch of different scenes for for stuff, you know. It's all pre-made and set up and whatever. And the beautiful thing about that is that you can actually load videos to be in there as well, like I did with the, the seamless intro. So if I ever really felt like it, I could have an intro and an outro that I triggered live, so I don't have to actually edit it. Oh, it's so good. I hate editing because um, whatever comes out of this is what goes on to YouTube directly. I don't I don't transcode. I don't redo anything because it, it does save it as a, a H.264 encoded into mp4 so it you know does the job more or less well and yeah uh the the camera i'm using the the webcam up there is a logitech c920 uh high def camera which is largely wasted on this tiny window that it shows me being in but it's cool it's got an autofocus feature i like it it works out pretty neat uh this mic is an sm58 and this actually isn't the mic that i was using for the longest time um i was using This guy, this is an Audio Technica AT2020. Yeah. You said I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I was right. That is a condenser microphone, and it is technically a better a better quality, but given the processing I'm doing in my voice, it doesn't necessarily matter what mic I'm using. Um, I mean, it does matter, but it doesn't matter so much that I really want to get like a I really want to be using that one. I was use I, I the reason why I switched is because I was using that for the uh, opera singer. If you remember that, this is a a poof, a mic poof. It's uh a, technically it's a pop shield. It's a windscreen, I guess. But I mean, there's other different ways you can deal with that. But this this very pr pretty effective versus and then so you can see a difference. It does the job well. Uh, I did recently just get some lights. Um, you can kind of see them. They're all kind of bright. And uh, trying to find the box it came in so I can uh, say what they are. Uh, Best Core? B -A -B -E -S -C -O -R. They're like the cheapest ones. They were, they were like $199 for the pair and some stands. So I got them on B&H photo video website. But nice place to buy stuff. Um, yeah. I believe that's everything that's relevant and towards towards how I record the videos. Uh, honestly, the whole thing about the, the the wires and the routing and the interfaces, the part that people miss is because that's the bit that's hard, you know, recording the ASIO and getting it to mix. Um, there's a piece of software called Virtual Audio Cables, which more or less is supposed to do what I do with the actual audio cables, only virtually. Um, I've never used it, but uh, a lot of people have, and apparently it's been effective. I don't really know. I've never used it. I've had, I mean, the setup I have, my audio interface, the two PreSonus Fire Studio projects is massive overkill for the stuff that most people that follow my videos do. The only reason why I have it is because I wanted to be a metal recording engineer and I needed to have a billion microphones to record Gargantu and drum kits. That's, that was my decision. At many years ago uh yeah and eventually like it's 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 kind of interesting that i'm doing this video now i i'm doing it now because i finished a 40k and i said that i would do it when i'm done with the 40k but um i'm actually going to change up how i do the video recording i'm actually going to get a separate computer and i'm going to run things into a, a dedicated interface going on in there so that i can like actually mix everything right and control everything 
all in one source and not have to worry about processing all of this on the machine that I'm also doing my audio editing on, on my, my actual track work. Because, uh, like, for right now, there's not really a noticeable hit on my CPU. You can see 3% CPU CPU usage. But when I'm doing, like, when I was doing, like, the, the, the some kind of dubstep track from scratch, that track gets busy. And having this crap doing all this stuff while I'm doing that is kind of bad. So um, that's what, that's kind of what I want to avoid is doing that. Uh, if I can also avoid it, I'll, I want to not have the vocal processes going on on this computer, but I might still have to be doing that. Um, but, I mean... I could, I mean, I have a laptop. I guess I could use that, but it's there's. I want to uh, as much as I don't want there to be ten billion computers working, you know, on whatever. Having having dedicated machines to a task does mean things will work faster and better. And thanks largely to you guys, I kind of can afford it. So it's um a good a good kind of thing to be doing towards, especially since I want to be doing more streaming. I want to be doing more more. I want to make more things and do more stuff. And having a smoother pipeline, even though my pipeline is already pretty goddamn smooth, but having a smoother pipeline will mean that I can do more, I can do better, and I can do longer. So, that's of benefit. Anyway, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.